Hey, this is part two on how to shoot your rifle to your rifle's max capability. This will be a quick segment. I'm just going to go over the flinching reflex and how to overcome it. Flinching is something we all do, and it's the easiest way to throw your shots off target. Flinching is done for one of two reasons normally. First reason is you want to try to control the recoil of your rifle for some reason, and the second reason is you're afraid of the recoil of your rifle for some reason. Flinching is something that you see really prevalent in handguns. If you go on YouTube and watch a lot of handgun shooting videos, if you notice the barrel of the handgun dipping down before the shot goes off, that's flinching. People do that with rifles too, especially hunting rifles, because they're generally heavier recoiling rifles. And for the most part, it's a fear of not getting hurt. Because everybody hears the old war stories of, hey, my old dot six used to kick like a mule. And because of those old war stories, they get ingrained into our subconscious. So when we get behind an .06 or 300 win or something of that comparison, you almost subconsciously feel afraid. You don't want any bodily harm to happen to you. doesn't mean you're a wuss. It's just a natural reflex. You just want to get over that. To illustrate how flinching affects your accuracy, here's the barrel of my .06. Say I'm pointed straight down range to a bullseye of a target a few hundred meters away. I'm scared of the recoil, so I tighten up and prepare for the recoil right when I touch off the trigger and my barrel dips down because of it. You can see that small movement will put my shot low. Generally the shots will go low, sometimes they'll go left or right, especially if you're on a bipod. Um, generally those shots will either go left or right, you'll still be off target and you know, unfortunately you won't get the group size that you desire or you'll miss the target completely which in turn messes with your confidence and which in turn just turns out to be a disappointing experience. A way to overcome flinching is first practice by dry fire. Do it in a safe way. Make sure your rifle can withstand dry firing. If you're worried, get a snap cap. A snap cap is a fake bullet with a rubberized primer so your firing pin has something to bounce off against so there's no metal to metal. Start with dry fire. Practice all your fundamentals, your trigger squeeze, your hold, your sight alignment, sight picture, breathing, all that good stuff. Practice it, practice it, practice it in your own home until it's almost second nature. Get to the range. When you set up and you get ready to fire your first live round down range, try to tell yourself, take a couple deep breaths and tell yourself recoil doesn't matter. Don't even worry about the recoil. Put it out of your mind the best you can. Focus all of your energy on your fundamentals. If you do that, if you focus 100% of all your mental energy on your trigger squeeze, your hold, your sight alignment, making sure your eye, is, your eye is far enough away from the scope for proper eye relief so that way the scope doesn't hit you, making sure your shoulder, uh, the buttstock is, surely, is, is securely wedged in your shoulder, you'll notice that when you're doing all that and focusing all of your attention on your fundamentals, the shot's going to go off as a surprise. There's a saying, they say the good shot is one that surprises you. That's true. When you're concentrating on your squeeze and everything else, boom, the shot's going to go off. The next thing you know, it's all over. The recoils happen. The shot went down range. More likely than not, it's going to be on target. Once that happens and you realize that, wow, the recoil doesn't hurt me, that builds so much confidence in that one shot that your next shot is going to be better and your next shot is going to be better, then before you know it, you'll be shooting different calibers of rifles and recoil doesn't even bother you. I can easily take a 30 out 6 or 300 win, something comparable to that, ca that caliber, and shoot it all day long. It's not because I'm some bravado tough guy. It's just because over time and by my own experimentation and learning from others that have more experience than me, I've learned how to properly hold the rifle, secure the rifle, to a degree where the recoil isn't slapping against my shoulder, I'm not getting hurt. Now, if you watch my videos on this rifle, my 100 yard, my 200 yard, you'll notice that number one, I am extremely accurate with this rifle. In fact, I'm shooting one quarter MOA at 200 yards with this rifle right now. You'll also notice when you watch me actually shoot the groups, you'll see that the rifle recoils. It's not the heaviest recoiling rifle out there, but you'll see a little bit of muzzle flip. You'll see it push against my shoulder, and you'll also notice that it's not hurting me. 
You'll also notice on the flip side, I'm not doing anything to try and control that recoil because you will never successfully fully control a rifle's recoil. You will only manage it. People get the misconception of controlling recoil from the tactical carbine classes out there when they're using their AR-15s and they're all these fancy either magazine holds or holds up near the front sight post like Magpul does saying, well, you're going to control your shots in a close and quarter environment. That's a whole different thing. Close quarters instruction and marksmanship are two different worlds. In the marksmanship world, you're not worried about recoil. Let the rifle recoil. Let it do what it's going to do. Now, you also notice in the videos, my only point of contact is back here to further illustrate the point. My hand's here providing a little bit of rearward pressure to seat the stock firmly in my shoulder. My trigger hand is just resting here. And the only pressure I'm giving with the trigger hand is to engage the trigger. The rest of the rifle is just on a bipod. So, you can see in those videos that even though the rifle's recoiling, my shots are very, very accurate. And in turn, I'm not hurt. This is definitely not a extremely heavy recoiling rifle. All I'm shooting is 150 grain spring, uh, 30 out 6 Springfields. 300 wind recoils slightly more. The... The recoil of this rifle I liken to a Mosin Nagant M44, except not quite as snappy. For those of you Mosin fans out there, I know a lot of you guys have Mosins. So that's kind of a quick comparison. So I'm going to stop the video. Feel free to leave any comments, questions, concerns, rebuttals. Uh, if you'd like to make a video response, feel free to do so. I'll approve it. Talk to some of the good long-range shooters out there on YouTube. Talk to guys like Mr. Surgical Precision. Mag 30th is another one. Mag 30th does long-range shoots with Milserp rifles. Those are generally pretty heavy recoiling rifles depending on which one it is he's shooting. So he could probably give you some tips. Uh, there's a lot of other good guys out there. Bisquick 30-06. He's a marine shooter. He knows his way around a rifle. Anybody that's on my first uh, on my front channel page there, you can go ahead and query them and they'll tell you a little bit. It's pretty much unanimous. What I'm telling you is what any firearms instructor will tell you is that flinching is bad and you don't you want to get over it as soon as possible. If you don't get over it at first, just keep shooting the rifle. If anything, the more and more familiar you get with your rifle, the more comfortable you'll get. You'll know what the recoil feels like and that in turn will just get you over that flinching reflex. So, uh, with that said, thank you for watching, and keep your powder dry.